Happy birthday. Happy birthday, because we have hit the big 5-0. It is in our lives now for 50 years, the phrase climate change. It's 50 years ago that climate change first appeared in the research report. After that, it's 50 years of fact on fact and fact, proving that we are the ones causing the fossil fuel burning of us, causing the heat to go up and the climate change. It's 50 years of facts that has proven that we are the cause of climate change. I think after 50 years of facts, there can be only one conclusion, right? Climate scientists are wrong. They have been wrong. They have been wrong for the last 50 years. Wrong to believe that we would be willing to change our routines based on their facts alone. Wrong to believe that we would be changing our system based solely on their facts. A willingness to act based on their facts alone. Because if we really want to put the change into climate change, then we need to realize that facts are only half the story. Facts don't move people. Emotions do. Feelings do. Experience does. Empathy does. Feeling the facts does make a change. And I believe that's where the artists come in. The painters and the poets. They are the ones who can give facts a voice. Because we, we, them and we and me, we can help out these scientists. We can make you feel the facts. We can turn these facts into personal, small and relatable experiences. So, how do I do that? Since I'm extremely dyslectic, writing a novel or a research paper, well, that isn't my thing. Uh, but instead of that, I work together with scientists. I work together with researchers and with universities. And I turn their facts into digital art installations. I turn their facts into small, relatable experiences. Because I believe that there's nothing so powerful as an, as an experience. So, one night I was reading this research paper from the Plastic Zoo Foundation about my beloved ocean. And I found something that scared the shit out of me. Because we all know that the ocean is full of plastics. And we all know that the plastic degrades in microplastics and nanoplastics. And the fish eat the plastics. We're the ones who are eating the fish and the plastic ends up in our body. But what we don't know, and what scared me, and probably will scare you a little bit, is that these nanoplastics, they can penetrate the mammal's cell tissue. They can nestle in our fat and into our body tissue. Basically, they're turning us into uh, plastic human beings. What and we were supposed to be these awesome cyborgs, right? Half human, half machine. And instead, we're becoming half human, half Tupperware container. <laughs> so, I can, and that's not great for us as a species, but it's great for me as an artist. Because I'm fueled by those things. And here you can see the first sketch. And next to a bad writer, I'm clearly a lousy illustrator. But basically what I'm trying to do and what I wanted to make is a mirror. A mirror that turns you into the plastic version of you. So we created the mirror and it turns you into actual piece of ocean plastic. So slowly it scans your outline, scans your silhouette. And as you move, the real piece of ocean plastic moves with you. Every move you make. So the 900 engines here are detecting your outline and they're giving and they're mirroring and throwing it back at you. So basically it's showing that all our actions influence the plastic in our oceans, but also the oceans and all the plastic in it are influencing us. And when I show this work, wherever I show this work in the world, I like to do something. I like to sit in a corner. I like to sit there and I like to observe. And everywhere I can see the same pattern emerging. 
You can see them coming. People start to play with it. They start to interact with it. They have a little bit of fun. And then slowly the message sinks in. And you can see them being uncomfortable. And you can see them feeling the facts. And you can see that there's comfort. And that's an emotion. And that's the moment when they start feeling the facts. That's the moment where they actually start to realize what the facts are meaning for them. But we have to talk about buts. Not those. These. Cigarette buts. Because we all know that smoking is bad for you, but we don't know how it's influencing our nature, how it's influencing our soil. And let me tell that. Let me tell you. It's 500 liters of water is being polluted by one single cigarette butt. It's one liter of cigarette, of one cigarette in 24 hours in water will kill 50% of all wildlife in the small ocean creatures. And that's 3.4 milliliters of deadly, deadly, deadly poisonous water coming out of one cigarette every second. I mean, can you imagine the scale of that? Can you imagine the sheer impact of one cigarette butt? And if you then you know that six trillion cigarettes that's a six with 12 zeros, are almost being smoked a year. And 65% of that ends up in nature. I mean, that's a fact that needs to come across. That's a fact that needs to be brought alive. So we created an installation that shows the impact of one single cigarette butt right in front of your eyes. And we created a system that is an algorithm pumping system. So it calculates how many visitors are in the museum it calculates how many people of those are likely to smoke in that country. And then it adjusts the artwork, it adjusts the liquids, it adjusts the pollution happening right in front of your eyes. So the more visitors, the more smokers, the more pollution. And it's scary, and that makes it personal at the same time. And I think that is the power of art. It can turn these overwhelming facts into personal experiences. Because art can make big facts small, and doing so, it can actually paint the bigger picture again. And this is what I mean. You can see the one cigarette butt laying in the ground, but you don't have an idea of the impact it has on our soils, on our rivers, on our oceans. But just because you cannot oversee that, cannot see that, it doesn't mean you cannot oversee that. Because there's something we cannot oversee now, and it's happening right now, still. And that's the burning of the Amazon. We can see it from outer space, but we have no shared idea of the scale. And after researching this, let me answer that for you. Because it's 1,500 square meters of rainforest disappearing every second. Every second, 1,500 square meters of rainforest is disappearing. That's 90,000 square meters a minute. And we're talking about 20 football fields here. So it's overwhelming, and these things scare me, and I think that's where art can come in, because it can make these big facts small again. Uh, so we made a small prototype, and here you can see one leaf disappearing straight in front of your eyes, just like the rainforest does. And we want to make this in a square meter, a square meter of rainforest disappearing at the rate of the rainforest. It's a good idea. But then the data came in. And we got sad, because the artwork wasn't fast enough. It was too slow. Our eyes couldn't comprehend. It was, the rainforest deforestation rate was so quick that our eyes couldn't keep up with it. So now we had to reprogram it, that every time one leaf flickers, 150 square meters of rainforest are disappearing, every time it flickers. And I guess, this was, for me, the first time I worked with data from the rainforest, from nature directly. And it changed my way of thinking, and it made me think about one of the oldest data sets into the world, tree rings. I love them now. Because hidden behind its bark of a tree, you can see its whole life. It's like a family photo album. Because you can see all the highlights, but you can also see all the moments of sorrow. So every year, a tree creates a ring. And the further apart these rings are, the healthier its life is. But if they're tingled, if they're mingled, if they're bent, 
that, that comes because of the changes in the climate, the environment, the forest fires, the pollution rates. And I guess the sad thing is that you have to cut them down, right? If you want to actually read this. Because it's amazing. It's basically a history book on climate change, what's hidden inside of these trees. So I thought we have a hard time listening to scientists. Wouldn't it be easier to listen to this voice of nature directly to turn these facts out of nature straight to the people. So we started a biological experiment together with the TU Delft and Stefano Mancuso. And we built a sensor system that creates a tree ring every second out of 12 sensors and 12,000 data points by its environment. And coming from the tree, using the data coming from the living tree, we created a system that generates these tree rings, giving a voice to nature a new way to making itself heard. And what I really like is that it was responding. So the moment you saw a traffic jam next to the trees or in the neighborhood, you can see the sensors detecting it. You can see through the tree that the whole screen in the back of it was lighting up. It was red. It was clear. It was heavy. And what I like to do, I'm still an artist. I like to add some artistic freedom there sometimes, where I want to empower the people, where I want to show that their actions do matter. So I build in that if they touch the tree, they could calm down the data, noticing that their power is in their hands, that they themselves can make a change. And I think these kind of elements work. And I guess it worked because I was standing there photographing the work and a little Chinese girl came to me and she was using a translating app and she said, my mom says that the trees get sad when there are too many cars around. And the girl was right because when the, when the data came in, me and everybody around me, we got sad as well because we saw the share impact of what we actually already knew that all the climate, all the pollution, all the changes are influencing our nature so heavily. And a lot of the times when the data comes back, we get sad. But on this particular project, I found a silver lining. I found something that I didn't know. And I, I think you didn't know either. Because they stick together. Trees are sticking together. They stick together as a team. They work together, they communicate with each other, they warn each other for dangers, for diseases, they warn each other for little bugs. I mean, this has given me so much hope. Because in 50 years of climate change, we haven't gotten far enough. We haven't gotten far enough yet. And if you can learn one thing of our trees, it's really simple. Together we're stronger, together as a team. Because we all know that heavy winds can tip over one tree but the forest can withstand a storm. So let us team up. Let us stick together, scientists and artists, to whoever wants to join for the next 50 years. Let's put a change into climate change. Happy birthday.